So you want to be a high value man. In today's lesson, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to do it. What's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist, and I'm on a mission to make black men as successful as possible. So please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because this information needs to go out to as many people around the world. Now before we get started with today's lesson, I gotta take a moment to say this. You know a lot of people watch videos like this and the first thing that comes to their mind is, well, why is you qualified to do a video like this? Who are you? And what do you bring to the table? I want to put out there before I begin today's lesson that I graduated from Baylor University with a degree in Management Information Systems. After my graduation, I worked in corporate America as a PMP certified IT project manager for Hewlett Packard, which at the time was the largest technology company in the world. I also served as a campus recruitment manager and president of HP Austin's Black Employee Network. And I retired from corporate America at age 26 to do what I'm doing today, which is being the CEO and founder of the online education company, Black Men's Career. At 23, I paid off over $95,000 in student loan debt. By 25, I had my very first real estate investment in North Austin, one of the top five rental markets in the world. I'm a best-selling author as well as the leader of True Spirit of Christ Church. So I have a little bit of credentials to be able to speak about this issue. But enough about me. This is about you and how you can become a high-value man. So what does it mean to be a high-value man? Well first let me say this. Being a high-value man has nothing to do with chasing women. I know that this term is widely used in that community, but being a high value man has everything to do with being the best version of yourself. High value man is not a new concept. It is something that has been around for years. It's clear and it's obvious. Whenever you see high performers at the top of the industry, you know that you're looking at a high value man. Examples of high value men would include Denzel Washington, Tom Brady, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, industry leaders that command authority and respect whenever they walk in the room. It takes time to become a high value man. You know, a lot of people are selling hopes and dreams on the internet about get rich quick schemes and how you can be driving in the latest Ferrari in two days from now. But we keep it real here in black men's career. If you want to be a high value man, which not everybody will be, and that's okay, you must dedicate 10,000 hours of time in order to get that accomplished. It takes time, y'all. But I'm going to show you in today's video that there's faster ways to get there than others. So let's hop into it. So everybody's got their different definition of what it means to be a high value man. But for the sake of understanding, I decided to use the framework and criteria from a brother named Kevin Samuels. He has a channel right now that's blowing up on YouTube and I thought that it would be fitting to explain his definition so that you can understand how to get to the next level. So in order to become a high value man based upon his criteria, you have to satisfy six different things. You have to have money, time, group acceptance, network, visibility and utility. What does that mean? You have to make at least $10,000 per month adjusted by your location. In other words, you may live in a city where the cost of living is reasonable. The barrier to entry in that city for high value man is $10,000. Now why does it start with money guys? It starts with money because money makes the world go round as we know. This has nothing to do with character. This has nothing to do with how nice a person is. We all know that people are largely judged by their money and their status. Now, if you're living in a location where the cost of living is extremely high, then you have to make more than $10,000 a month in order to be qualified as a high value man. 
High living locations would include places like Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, places where you got to pay an arm and a leg just to be able to get a gallon of milk. Now, when it comes to time, you have to be making a select amount of money for an extended period of time. This is because you have to prove that you have stability. Anybody could hit a lick. Anybody could hit it big for one day and then fall off tomorrow. So when you position yourself as high value, it's showing that you have enough consistency and longevity to thrive in the marketplace. Number three is group acceptance. Group acceptance is when you're certified as a high value man by other high value men. Oftentimes they'll say things like, this guy is like us. This guy deserves to be part of the team. That's what group acceptance is all about. And it is an important component when we talk about your network. Your network is your net worth. Your network consists of other high value men that you have relationships with that you can leverage to start getting more results. Oftentimes, successful people hang around other successful people. A lot of successful people don't hang around with unsuccessful people. So you'll know that you're a part of the high value community if you have other relationships with people that are doing things at very high levels. If you don't know anybody that's doing it, this is one clear sign that now you got to put in work to be a part of the club. Next is visibility. Your income and your position needs to be well respected. What I mean by that is you can't profess high value, but you have an entry level position. People that are high value are known for being in top seats within respective companies. Maybe they may be in the C-suite of an organization like the CEO, the COO, the CFO, and it's very apparent that they are doing big things. Number six is utility. This means that they are useful to themselves and others. These are the type of people that everybody wants something from. Why? Because they are high value people. They're sought after and desired. People are always giving them opportunities. People always want to be in their presence. But I want to show you how you can satisfy each of these criteria. Now, remember, number one is money. The minimum entry is $10,000 per month adjusted by location. And when it comes to you making this kind of money, there's two key roads to becoming that high value man financially. One is as an employee and the other is as an entrepreneur. When it comes to making $10,000 a month as an employee, there's multiple factors that goes into it. Number one, you got to have the credentials. Typically people that make six figures or more at a nine to five job are people that have advanced degrees along with certifications. You know, I've had a lot of friends go back to school to get their master's degrees, get MBAs. Some folks got PhDs. And it's all because of the fact that that's what it takes to be able to make more money at most companies. A lot of jobs won't even accept you unless you meet the requirement of having an advanced degree or a certification. If this is the route that you're going to go, this is one of the first things that you need to get down if this is the route that you're trying to take. Next is experience. Most people don't start off making six figures right out the gate. They start at entry level positions, but the thing that helps them grow is their experience. A lot of times when you look at high value men that have thrived in corporate America, they've had at least 10 years of experience within that industry. If you're trying to take the route of an employee to be a high value man, then you must understand that it's a long game. And experience doesn't just mean you're sitting down at a desk watching time go by for years. This means that every year you're taking on bigger projects that pushes you to the next level within the organization. So you might need to be a part of the big acquisitions. You might need to be part of the multi-million dollar initiatives that will change the company. You need to start making a name for yourself from one company to the next and through the experience that you gather in that, 
that's what's going to be more appealing on your resume. This also leads to the next piece, which is performance. If you're gonna be a six-figure earner as an employee, you can't be coasting it at the nine to five job. You're gonna to have to be the first one there and you're gonna to have to be the last one to leave. And you need to make sure that you have incredible performance so that way you can document it at the year in review. This is big because a lot of times people work very hard at their jobs throughout the year, but they present it poorly when it's time for evaluations. They don't realize that that is a process that's very important to getting raises and higher salaries. If you want to be a high value man, that means that you have to be looked at as worthy of promotion within the organization. And the only way that you're going to be promoted is by showing proficiency at your current job. You got to go in there and show and prove that you're overqualified for this step, which means that you need to be that next step up. You need to be on that next pay grade. That requires high performance. This also requires negotiation. Listen, Companies aren't just throwing away six figures. They're not handing it out on a silver platter all willy nilly. If you want to make $100,000 or more working at a corporation, that means that you need to display enough proficiency so that way somebody is willing to cut you that kind of check. It's not just about your performance, however. It also has to do with how well you can negotiate. You could be one of the best workers all day, but you could get passed by by somebody else that's competing for the same position that's more polished. I watch this happen all the time. So you got to know when is the right time to ask your boss for a raise. You have to know how to pitch yourself as to why you are the top candidate for the next position. If you don't know how to negotiate, then chances are you're going to get left behind. In fact, a lot of studies show that one of the reasons why women will get compensated less in the marketplace is because they typically negotiate less than men. Negotiation is one of the keys to higher salary in corporate America. Lastly, it's industry. You know, if you got a degree in underwater basket weaving, you should not expect to graduate from college and get a high-end job. Certain industries give out higher pay than others. And it's really just as simple as that. So make sure that if you're going back to school or you're studying new skills and learning new things, make sure that you're putting yourself in an industry where people have a habit of getting well paid. OK, don't try to put yourself in an industry where everybody is making minimum wage, but then you yell and rant about how you want to be a high value man. You have to go where the money is. In order to reach high value status as an entrepreneur, there's two fundamental things that you need. One is that you have to have an offering that has great market value. And next, you have to understand your math. What do I mean when I say you have to have an offering that has high market value? A lot of people start businesses. Everybody has a passion. But just because you have a passion doesn't mean that the market actually wants it. It doesn't mean that the market cares about what you have to offer. The more that you can create a product or a service that's in high demand, the better off you will be to get paid at higher amounts. It's just that simple. And when it comes to you reaching that high value status through your business, I'm going to tell you the same advice that my mentor told me. It's not magic. It's math. You know, a lot of people get caught up in this high value thing and they think that there's some magic potion that you got to take so that way the gods can come down and anoint you as the high value man. It's not magic. It's math. If you're trying to make $10,000 a month as an entrepreneur, that means you're looking at making $333 on average per day. Simple as that. $10,000. $333 on average per day. And when you break that down further, that typically means that you're selling around $15 an hour. So the question is, what product or service can you offer that will allow you to make $15 an hour or more? If you can answer that question, then you're already on the road 
to high performance. It's simply just a matter of how do I keep repeating the process? How do I market it? How do I present it? How do I develop my customer base big enough so that way I can keep getting paid the same amount over and over? These are the top two roads to becoming a high value man. And there's obviously a lot more ways to make money like investing and other things, but these are the two fundamental principles that you need to consider as you're getting started on the road to success. Now there's a couple key things that we need to note before we move on. Like I told you earlier, these are two different paths, which means there's a different timeline associated with both. Typically people that reach high value status in corporate world typically get there once they're around 40 to 50 years old. Now you do have some people in their 30s that are making good money, but that also is contingent upon their industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you structured your business the right way and you're making the right decisions, you can get to high value status within five to 10 years, but you gotta be willing to put in the work. There's gonna be a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of long hours that you're gonna have to put in to get there. So you can get there shorter as an entrepreneur, but the only way to cut the learning curve is by putting in more hours and more effort, and then you can get there. That's the reason why I left corporate America. Now I talk a little bit more about creating generational wealth in my premier program, Zero to Six Figures. I outline all of the ways that you can go about making six figures or more whether you're working at a nine to five job or not, whether you're trying to make it through passive income, active income, real estate, et cetera, I outline all of the ways and options on how to do it. But when you're thinking about trying to make money as an entrepreneur, one of the things that you also have to consider is whatever amount of money that you're making in revenue, obviously there's going to be expenses associated with it like taxes and other operating expenses. So you need to make sure that you're adjusting for that before pocketing all of it, calling yourself a high value man. The second criteria as part of this framework is time. You need five plus years of proven results. The number one question that you need to ask yourself is this, which career path allows me to grow geometrically? What I mean is, which career path is best suited for you long term. If you're a part of a fly by night hustle, that might hold you over for three months, but it's not gonna hold you over for three years. If you're working at a job that you can't stand, if you can't see yourself being there next month, how could you possibly see yourself making money there over the next five years? You gotta sit down and really think about, you know, what is it that I can do well long term? See, I could have stayed in corporate America doing what I was doing and making the money that I was making. But because I knew that wasn't my life calling, I wanted to get out of it as quickly as possible. I did not want my short-term money to mess up my long-term potential. You gotta find something that you can stick to over a long period of time and build it, build it and build it. Because eventually, the money will compound on top of each other and you will go far past the minimum of high value criteria. When it comes to group acceptance, I'm gonna give you the top three ways to do that. Number one is to provide unique value. If somebody else is really good at one thing, be good in another. Don't be the same version of somebody else because what are you useful for? If you can take a skill that's rare but in high demand, it's easy for you to be accepted by everyone else because you're bringing something to the table that without you, they will never get. Secondly, make sure that you have something that's respectable. A lot of high value men respect work ethic if they don't respect nothing else. So if they see you doing something that's innovative, something that's bold, they could get behind it. They can appreciate the fact that you had enough courage and enough vision and discipline to put yourself behind your life's passion and walk in it despite the risk. Number three is you gotta be likable. It's not just about your technical skills and how much you know, you also have to be a people person. So for all of you kings out there, I would highly recommend you check out the book, 
How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You have to know how to make solid connections with powerful people so you can get the things you need. When it comes to building your network of other high value men, it's as simple as this. Find out where they congregate and lead with value and not entitlement. When you lead with value and not entitlement, it means that when you come in the presence of a high value man, it's best to approach him with something that you can offer him to his benefit rather than begging for a handout. You know, I see a lot of people do this and they never get the results that they want and they wonder why it's because you're not offering any value to the other person. People by nature are selfish. They're always wanting to know, well, what's in it for me? So if I'm a high value person and you wanna be able to get my time, the first thing that I'm gonna be asking myself is, is it worth my while for me to do business with this person? So maybe if I'm pressed on time, but you have free time, you can offer me value in the form of time towards something that I'm working on doing. Whatever it is that you can offer to other people, give value. Instead of just asking, hey, can you do this for me? Hey, can you give me this handout? Presenting yourself like a charity case. Present yourself as a valuable person in order to attract other high value men. Also, you got to find out where they congregate. What professional groups do they belong to? What seminars are they attending? You need to start getting this on your calendar. You need to start researching where you can find this community of people because birds of a feather flock together. Once you can find their organizations, that's when you can start to put yourself in the presence of them and also develop yourself as a high value man. Okay, now when we're talking about title, we're talking about this. Who are you? What do you do? And how important are you within the organization? Who are you? What do you do? And how important are you within the organization? I can just tell it to you like this. You're not going to get visibility on the maximum level until you focus on mastery. Everybody wants the shiny title. Everybody wants to stick their chest out and say that they're this and they're that. But visibility is a byproduct of mastery. When you put in the time to master a subject, you make yourself the leader of that field. Become an industry leader. Become laser focused on one thing. And as you spend more time focusing on that one thing, more than anybody else, it's inevitable that you become the go-to guy in that position. Lastly is utility. The number one way to be a benefit to yourself and others is to get down rare in-demand skills. The more you can get rare in-demand skills as a part of your knowledge, that will position you to always be sought out by other people. You'll become that person that everybody else is talking about. You're going to notice when it comes to high value men, they're often being referred to by other people because you have become the certified person that is an expert in that area. And also, as a bonus, I want to point out that being a high value man is a function of your mindset. If you have a fixed mindset, you're not going to get to high value status because you're always gonna be comfortable with where you already are. If you wanna be a high value man, you have to have a growth mindset where you're always learning and you're always striving to do new things. The more you adopt that mindset, keep giving it time, keep planting seeds, and over time, the results of that will show. Now, being high value isn't for everybody. But if you're serious about reaching this criteria and becoming the best version of yourself, then I want to invite you to my free masterclass where I'm going to show you how you can build a six figure net worth without working at a boring job that you can't stand. This masterclass is a special event where I'm showing you how to create assets, generate passive income, and have a future legacy to pass down to your kids. If you want to know more, click the link in the description below, okay? So thank you so much for tuning in.
I want you to focus on becoming a high value man, if that's for you. And I'll see you on the next lesson of Black Men's Career.